Greetings people, my name is Shane Clark Jr. Um, better known as Vibes. Most people know me as Vibes, ZJ Vibes. Um, today I'll be telling you a little bit about my story, how I got to where I am today professionally. And uh, yeah, you can get to know me a little bit better. You see what I say? So, what are we going to chat about now? Your journey. My journey. Your Good. So, um... Which part of my journey now should we start with? Mm. What do you want me to do in high school? In high school? Well, when I was in high school, you know, it's a different thing, you know. Like, at the beginning of high school, I wanted to be, like, a lawyer, any type of lawyer. I never really pin it down what, you know, what kind of lawyer I wanted to be. But, I did just know, say, oh, I didn't want to be a lawyer. At that point, I don't think it was like you know a passion is just something where you hear your parents you know say yo you know you would i like if it be one doctor one lawyer one something you know because them figures say when you go that way there you know what i mean you make a money and you can sustain yourself um so many just choose lawyer because you know at that time lawyer it just seemed like the best option to me because i could have chat and i could have you know so that's what I chose. When I got to high school now, it started to change a little bit because I start to find myself more aligned with sports. So I said, maybe I could be like a lawyer along the line there. By grade 8, all of that does change. So I stop wanting to be a lawyer by grade 8. Um, mostly because of my father. Uh, my father, he works at RFM as a technical operator, the librarian and something else, you know. So going to work with him, being in the studio and all of them things there, it kind of shift the focus from the lawyer something there because when you read up on how to become a lawyer and all of them things there, they tell you, yo, you have to study for the bar, you have to do this, you have to do that. I say, no, I can't bother all of them something there, you see me? So... The new passion was going to the studio with my father. So my father actually influenced, was a big influence, major influence in who I am today. And him don't even know that, or does he? I don't know, but um, at that time, him did also want me to be like a lawyer too, because that was his first, you know, passion or what him did want to be at the time. and. He never want me to follow in a few footsteps. I don't know if it's because of the struggles where him go through or him realize it probably like, you know, not sustainable, as in financially and otherwise. I don't know, but him did a try if he discouraged me. But, hmm, as I say, here I am today. Um, so yeah, by grade nine, you know, I start go studio often and, you know, chill with the, Z, the DJs. They don't call them CJs over there, so they call them DJs. Um, so I used to just chill with them and learn, you know, the mixing, the operating on the board and them type of thing there. And I say, yo, this more and be. At that time, there wasn't any zip, you know what I mean? So I say, yeah, I want to work at RFM when I grow older and thing. Um, I guess them start notice, say, uh, you know, I like them thing there. So they started to put me in a them little programs, the little kiddies program for try to develop me that way there. So I started off doing a program that got very popular in the mornings. I don't call it Kiddies Corner. So I was one of those kids on there. I was the eldest, but anyways. Um, so yeah, that was me being on air for the first time. It wasn't live, but yeah, it was a joy to hear yourself in the mornings. When you go to school and the other local kids, they might say, yo, now you that. I mean, I say, yeah, I mean that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that was my first on air appearance. After that, now I say, yo, I definitely know says a DJ announcer slash person I want to be. So, you know, Throughout the whole school years, um, I start develop the mixing and all of them things there. And then by grade ten, it was very solid in my mind. Say, I that more for me, 
you know so some of the times me used to be like very what would I call it now enthusiastic about the studio I make it my priority some of the time my father I wonder like yo like you know preschool and anything and I say yo yeah mom I do my thing same you know by the way I was always like you know the top three I'm a class and everything so you know but it wasn't with any real effort you know what I mean it was like something with us come naturally and like at one point my teachers they must help me say yo you know yeah we is it talent and your brain and whatever I mean I say yo my good man my car I know I'm one for me and I know how I get here so I don't need to you know do all of this study about maths and Ray and Ray but I can just do a thing and I get 190 you know without any real effort and I used to just you know be on my case all the time I mean I tell them say yo mm, just easy you know what I mean um, after I leave high school now, I was very sure by that time um, the zip came around and by that time I did very sure say it's not RFM anymore, it's zip. So I was looking at Caramac and I said to myself, do I really want to do that? Do I really want to go to Caramac, go waste my money or I just want to use my natural gifts and of course the network that i've already built for those try to you know get in if i just even for you know start at the lowest position and work myself up because you know and i must say after i left high school it was a little bit of a struggle but i really think it was gonna be like a little seamless thing like somebody from irfm i could probably introduce me or something you know along that line but that never work out. So, but it was all right then. So I started to do odd jobs in between. Um, start play like some sound system at night time and them thing there, even though that wasn't so financially rewarding, if you'd like to put it that way. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, fast forward. You know, there was a time when we decided to do some short courses like on um, speech and all of them nice things there. So at the end of the course, there was this internship thing where, you know, you needed to do to complete the course. Anyways, me use that internship thing now and decide to apply to ZIP on that basis. I did so for... I'd say like four months. Every other week, I would have sent a resume until one day them just call me, and I was like, okay. And the lady said, make sure so you come Wednesday, and this was like Monday. So I said, okay, next week Wednesday, and she said, no, not next week Wednesday, no farm. This Wednesday. So I went for the interview, and she said, all right, you can do your internship here. And at the end of the six weeks, then we see what's going on. Went there six weeks. Each week, I was in a different department, just learning, and you know, because there was this form woman have to fill out. They say, "Oh, I learned this in this department, and this is how it's done," and blah blah blah. Um, after the six weeks, apparently, them did like me because I was such a fast learner and them did already see said there was like a a what would I call it now like they did have some amount of training in the field already because of RFM and everything there. So at the end of the six weeks I say yo boss you know some more I like for stay on indefinitely and I'll work for free you know and she said what kind of person is this? Why if you work for free and you don't have another job? I said, because, you know, this is what I really want to do. So, I don't have no problem making that sacrifice. At that same time, you know, obviously, me never did that work now, eh? So, we used to still do the little playouts, you know, with one sound system just down the road or so. And it used to be $500 a night. And sometimes, like, three, four nights per week we play. 
you know, like some round robin and them type of thing there. And I had the same money that I use go back to zip every week. A lot of people would even know, say, enough time I go there and I'm dead for hungry now. I'm mean, if you tell you. Because at that time I was living on my own. And, you know, 2000 like I can't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, enough time I just the bus fear alone, I'm going to go. And I don't know if I had the dedication and the passion, the boss, see? And eventually somebody left and, you know, them just eased me into that position. You know, it wasn't a lot of money, but at least I had a foot in the door. So that's how I started to work at Zip. Um, after about like three months, like the supervisor for the newsroom, she came and she said, yo, you know, more like your voice, you know, more than like them for train you for, you know, do the news, whatever. And I said, well, okay, that's an opportunity. And I went to the boss and she said, all right, we're going to do that. And then I started training for the first couple months, year, and them thing that I tell you, I used to make all of our mistakes. Still. Weird. But all right. You know, that's how I got my start. And then, fast forward three years later, like one night, my day in my bed, because the boss always knows, say, you know, more of a play and them thing there, but, you know, obviously she's not going to stick your pan, fling your pan, people read and them thing there. So, um, three years later, like me just in my bed, like after two, I'm a night owl, so most of the times I'm up. And she called me and she said, um, you can manage a studio, right? I was like, yeah, you know, I always in there, I do stuff like, you know, when them have live shows, I always operate the board and them thing. So she, she said, all right, here well. I can't find nobody for work, you know, so I'm going to make it work. I was like, okay. Can you get to the station now? Them times I'm not driving or nothing, you know. And I was at night, you know, so. I said, yeah, man, so I'm going to call one of my taxi bridging. I mean, I did have money for paying, but I tell him, say, yo, you know, I'm going to bust this, you know, you see me? So I want say, yo, no problem, man. I drop it down there because I usually give him mixtapes and them things there because I have a sound in them car. So, you know, I know the, him know the thing. So I said, yeah, man, I have no problem. And he dropped me down there and I played that first night that she said, no jingles, no talking. You know what I mean? You just like use station jingles and just play. I'm sorry. I'm going to play the first time. Like two weeks later, it happened again. She never have nobody to play. And she called me. Yeah, I got to do the same thing again. I was like, all right, I'm going to do it again. A couple of weeks later, she called me again and she said, this time, send me all of the jingles that we have and we can approve them and then you can play. But no talking. It's all right. And then, you know, for a few, that was how it was. Until she said, all right, you can talk and do your thing. And it was be a two to six in the morning, but it was a step. You see me? So, let us work with it. And one day, I tend to two open up. Yo, me jump, you know. Come here and say, yeah, see me at all. You know, so. Mm. And then from 10 to 2, um, I play one 6 to 10 now, you know, man. I'm big, you know, because all of my fans and my family, they might listen to them things, you know, you know, because they might say, yo, you don't want to read them. I say, yeah, see me? I tell you. And that's how I got started there, you know what I mean? Most people still come to me like, probably like my past principal. I say, yo, you have so much potential, you know, you should have gone to college and get your degree and all them things. I mean, I said to her, I said, listen, lady, I'm already doing what I would be doing if I go to school and, you know, make some people take some millions out of my account and them things there. I'm a struggle for pay it back through student loan. So why would I put myself through that? She said, you make yourself more marketable. And at one point, I did uh, maybe lean towards agreeing with her. But then when I realized, uh, you know, this is a creative industry. And while, yes, a degree might help if uh, you know, push forward, like managerial positions and everything. That, that was never my goal. I don't want to, you know, be in charge of nobody and them something. I just want to let loose my creativity and everything. You know what I'm saying? And... Working at Zip actually allow you to be that person, you know what I'm saying? Even people were 
come there from Caramac. Them still have to train them over and, you know, what would I call them? Call it now. Like, put them through the same zip experience for turn them into, you know, zip personalities. Because when you come from Caramac, it's like, that's who you are, you know? But you need to be fluid when you're at zip, you know what I'm saying? So, it did work out for me, but I'm not saying that it might work out for you in the same way there because your profession might be different. Um, you probably want to be a pharmacist, obviously, you have to go to college to do your thing because you, know, you have to go study medicine and all them foolish things there. But um, yeah, if you're a creative in my mind, I don't see where having a degree or not having a degree means you're not going to be successful. You know what I'm saying? If you have that natural talent, that natural talent can put you on. You know what I'm saying? Look how much people boast on social media and them don't even have like nothing to them name. You know what I'm saying? I know them popular and them influential and all these things. And this is not me bashing the education system. But, but as I say, if you can make it without all of them things there, why not? You know what I'm saying? So, that's how I got to where I am. You know what I'm saying? Um, I wouldn't say it's because I'm a father or me working at IRFM, you know, made us transition into that. But, them set the little foundation where help helped me, faith, you know. And obviously, I'm not a don't spot or, you know, I can go to a degree right now and would have, you know, be successful. But it just wasn't something when I did feel like, so, you know, was a priority for me at the time. So, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. How did vibes come about? <laughs> and uh, and all of that. Mm, oh, you want the vibes now? Hmm. Vibes came about. I was in grade nine. That's how long I have that name there. Like. I was in grade nine and me that used one like an idiot name. And you know, me used to play like I was the resident DJ at school because obviously, you know, you know, so every fit, every every pan we knock, I made them call for play. You know, at that time virtual DJ did I run the place and that is what me did have. Um, use at the time. So me I mash up some concert and some this and some that and you know one girl, well a group of girls come to me and them say yo that DJ I'm full of vibes, you have vibes if you name. And I said hmm maybe we will just change my name to vibes and that's how I did it you know. I made a search for like spelling and at that time vibes cartel was super popular you know what I mean so we just teeth the spelling don't sue me. Yeah, some of those deepest spelling. Um, and it kind of matched my crazy personality at the time. I have two personalities. It's kind of like split. I have like an introverted side where, you know, me just, you know, Michelle somewhere. And, you know, you have to be a special person to get me out there. Just like, oh, yeah, get me out there. Right? You know what I'm saying? But there's another personality where you just turn on anytime you have to perform or. You know, I'm just step on a stage, but um, yeah. So 